Right, it's okay, welcome back to the Average Golfers channel and another video of testing the tips where I, as an average golfer, just like you, test out some of the very best tips, drills out there from fellow golf YouTubers. And this one's really interesting. This is three faults that can absolutely ruin your game. And Danny Maud comes up with ways in which they can easily be fixed, or at least he thinks so anyway. So we're probably eight or nine episodes in of testing the tips series. And it's getting a bit repetitive that I say this same thing, but I've got to do it. And that is that this is my interpretation of, in this case, Danny Maud's video. So anything that you see that me, uh, uh, that I relate, please go and check out Danny's full video. Subscribe to his channel if you don't already for a greater explanation, a more technical explanation from a PGA professional. But I'm going to give this one a go because like I said, I've watched it. I've seen these three faults that are very, very common. I've certainly seen them in my game. And I reckon Danny's got three tips, drills, whatever you like to call them, that can certainly help me. And I'm hoping they can also help you. Right, so this is the first part of the problem, really. And I think for me, this really resonates, and particularly early on in the game for me. And that's getting a sort of, I suppose, a bit all in the arms in terms of the swing, so a lack of power. And that really comes from not turning that top half early on in the round particularly like i said when i'm loosened up a bit everything's starting to flow then yeah maybe that's not a thing but it can be early on you're just looking to guide one down there perhaps is a common fault so again becomes all arms there's not much rotation in those hips nor the shoulders so the first thing danny talks about is how we can make sure that we're starting to turn our shoulders and in turn our hips as well and the way he does that is quite simply you're going to take your head over your right shoulder as if someone's calling you from behind there and you're going to look up to the sky so your point of reference is just to look up to the sky sounds simple i know but just do it and write what you do so your address position club in hand turn to look at the sky and all it does straight away you'll feel it yourself it turns your shoulder it also rotates the hips as well so straight away you get up into that great starting position now like i said it sounds really simple but for me how many times i realize i'm just swinging all arms like i said early on whereas this simple drill takes me up here i can feel a stretch right the way down there you can already see the hips start to turn because they simply you cannot stop the hips from turning to, to get into that position so straight away it's just straight up to there and then through and then all you're doing is you take up to that position and then remove the kind of looking back bit and just try and feel that same swing for looking at the ball and all it does like i said straight away four or five practice swings with the head looking up bit of a warm up before i get to that tee when i start the address position obviously the head stays still but i can feel that turn i can remember that position that i was in when i was able to lift my head it gets me straight back in it and the shoulders and the hips are already starting to turn right from the off and not on the fourth and fifty when i've warmed up right so what you're going to see now is me just attempting to hit a few shots with that simple drill so just the head going back like i said what we just looked at and you'll see those shots are okay no great focus on any other part of the swing right now just purely getting that turn right making sure i'm using those shoulders and hips nice fluid swing through results okay so far danny but the next bit is how we then get from these arms up top which is that position he's got us into with uh, that kind of look into the sky and how we then start the downswing and he said you start the downswing with their hips the arms will follow the problem a lot of golfers will do is they get to this position and then we again become all arms and then the exaggerated release is that we start the downswing with the hands not good lost all the power that we've been storing so no matter uh, all the other problems that can come from that but just that mere fact that the, the the power if you like that we've managed to store in that turn has then all gone because we don't release any of the hips nor that shoulder turn so how do we get from there into the ball effectively and what danny again calls the sort of phase two is this idea of throwing a ball releasing a ball 
Now it's a visual, and again, I keep saying in all these videos, I've watched loads of these right now. Some of the things resonate, some of those videos resonate with me, others don't. So try it and see what you think. But you get to the top here, and then what he's saying is you then need to release with the hips. And he talks about an arc that sort of appears here when your hips start to move forward and that bottom arm comes through and that's where he's talking about this release of the hand that you're throwing something through, throwing a ball underarm and then he, uh, he gives a similar example of throwing a sort of frisbee with his forearm and that's that release. So you get to the top and then we throw that ball through. So it's up to the top like we were and then you're throwing that ball through that arc and you see those hips and again not sliding which I props just did then so it's up to here and then make sure you're turning through so that drill though what he's or what you're trying to visualize experience like I said is perhaps not with the ball uh, not with the club but when you get to the top of that backswing for me it helped me more so with that sort of frisbee motion so this forearm being the lead arm rather than the uh, underarm the sort of throwing of the ball that idea of releasing a sort of frisbee, discus type of throw, that's what helped me. So it's up to the top, and then you're kind of releasing, as I said, this forearm with a throw underneath. And then we're into that sort of final stage of how do you link all those things together, and finally a golf ball. Right, so I'm going to recap on that, and this is as much as for my benefit as it is for yours, because this is probably, the, well, for me anyway, the most um, difficult one I've had to explain and the one I'm struggling with to relay. So let's hope we get this bit right. So the first bit, like I said, it was that case of looking to the sky, getting in that position up top. We're then looking at the hips moving and starting this kind of downswing where we've got this uh, kind of curve almost in the um, leg and spine area. And then we start to release and it's that throw through. And like I said, whichever way you like to do that, whether it's that feeling of release through that bottom hand or in my case, like I said, that's kind of frisbee. So then when we're doing the practice swings, it was just very much of up to the top and then release that sort of swing, throw the ball out. And that's where he links the sort of three moves together. Danny loves a little bit of a rhyme. And I think one of my favorite videos that we've done so far was one, two and pivot through, which was very much about looking at strike of your irons. And in this one, he goes one, two, and throw it through, which is, uh, well, it works for me. So that one, two, and then it's that throw it through. And if you can get that kind of one, two, and then throw it through. And it's the same in principle kind of idea. But again, whichever video suits you in terms of your brain, whichever works. So you see me at a couple of shots here now that's uh, being overlaid. And again, very, very quickly, I got some great ball striking really did work well but still the odd one that leaked and i think for me the one thing that i struggled with in terms of over complicating things for me was when i was was bringing the sort of hips in and this idea of starting the downswing with your hips as opposed to your arms now i don't know whether i do that or i don't but all i all, all i'm aware of is that when i was concentrating on moving the hips first and then the arms second I lost kind of my coordination, if you like, and that sequence all went a bit to cock and you'll see a couple of balls leaked out right. So I did something that we've not done before, which was we incorporated last week's video into this. And we use this kind of, uh, this mat, this ball collector um, that you see at driving ranges and we talked about, don't forget, if you've not seen that video, there's a link up uh, uh, above for you. But basically, created an arc shape and for me this the combination of the two then really sort of helped me out so what i did was don't forget this is all about following this this sort of route this arc and it made a big difference to me so up high then a case of then throwing that frisbee through and coming down below so let me give that a go hopefully what you heard was a real good crisp strike We've got a ball with a little bit of right to left on it, not a great deal of it. And again, what I don't want to start doing with any of these drills in my own game is I've years ago suffered with a bit of a bit of a hook. I like to call it a draw, but in reality it can be a hook at times. So I don't want to overdo that. But what I really like with this sort of uh, combination of the two drills was I love that kind of, that looking back it was a great way to get my body turning. 
love that i love the throw in the release with that frisbee or the underarm throw with the ball like i said hips bit just got me so i put them together i look up that's a real decent ball again and the strike i think that's got to be i glance over to the screen that's making its way to the middle of the green again so the thing for me with all these videos and perhaps this one highlighted it more than ever was that you take elements from the tips that work for you and in this case to be able to combine two of those tips and put them together really really helped me and i've got to say that over the weeks that we've been doing this it's helped my own game but i've been asked this question in the comments it's helped my game no end the strike has been so much better in terms of my iron play it's been a lot lot straighter it's been a lot more consistent in terms of the strike but as i would say don't overcomplicate matters don't get drawn into things that perhaps can uh, send you in the wrong direction if it ain't broke don't fix it i think is the saying and that certainly for me was hitting the ball really well bringing these sort of things in particularly me for the turn was a major major key thing for me to remember early on in a round but again great video great tip from danny maud as i've said if I've not explained it properly, go back and watch his video and see how he explains it and maybe you'll interpret it just a little bit different. But as ever, thank you for watching. Uh, I really do appreciate the support in this series. There's been a load of comments, which I love. It's been a load of encouragement to keep these going. So hopefully we'll see you next week. It seems to be that on a Thursday night, it'll be another testing the tips video every week. So hopefully I'll see you all next Thursday.